much worse. And Mr. Conway, if, if tax cuts had worked uh, for many years, uh, why hasn't this, uh, how would a hometown tax credit or tax cut, how would that work effectively? Uh, has it been uh, looked at as far as... Yes, it's been looked at. It's been looked at uh, by Moody's.com. And uh, what they've estimated is about three-quarters of a million jobs all across the country because up in the United States Senate, they passed a, sort of a holiday uh, from Social Security taxation for hiring an unemployed person. We need to go further than that and, and provide the incentives to the, to the private sector. And um, you know, we, the, the next United States Senator from Kentucky, Bill, has to have a jobs plan. Just saying that people ought to take lesser wages or need tough love, that's, that's not a jobs the plan. And there are clear choices in this race. But and Rand Paul was talking about how, how there are clear choices here. Yeah, there are. There are clear choices for seniors, for students, for veterans, for women. There the, are very clear choices. The interesting in this thing about the stimulus package, though, is a trillion dollars that Jack supports and President Obama supports, a trillion dollars. Recently, we found out 77,000 checks were sent to dead people. 17,000 checks were sent to inmates. This is an example of government run amok, and this is precisely why we don't want to send more money to Washington. We need to send less money to Washington. All right, gentlemen, we'll money uh, take, a, take a break here. We do invite questions tonight from Kentucky Tonight viewers, and we'd like to thank everyone who sent questions in advance of the program. Uh, we got many, and we sure appreciate your participation. You may send an email, though, tonight to kytonight at ket.org. Please include first and last name town or county in your message. You may also use the web form at www.ket.org slash kytonight. Click on contact us or you may call us at 1-800-494-7605. We'll take just as many of those calls as we can. Uh, among the general public, uh, gentlemen, uh, TARP remains one of the most vilified programs uh, that was ever enacted by Congress. Uh, viewed largely as an effort by former Wall Street executives to bail out current Wall Street executives. Officials in the current administration, though, former administrations and some leading economists, uh, they insist that TARP was uh, a success and that uh, it alleviated the severity of the financial crisis and right now is being repaid. So I want to ask you, was TARP a success, Mr. Conway? I don't think so because it doesn't have enough accountability in it. Uh, I think there are lessons to be learned. Uh, they, the people on Wall Street who created this mess came in the dark of the night and said, uh, you've got to bail us out, you've got to bail us out. And the government started handing out money, and then the bigger banks started acquiring the sicker firms, and uh, executives started taking bonuses, and there was no accountability. And I'm all about accountability. As Attorney General, I, I've taken on pharmaceutical companies, I've taken on uh, big oil companies, and I believe you have to have some accountability. And to come in the dark of the night and say, give us money, um, I, don't think it, I don't think it worked. I don't think that's the right way to do business. That money is being repaid, though, Dr. Paul. Was well, it a success or was it a failure? Absolutely. Absolutely a failure, wrong idea to do. I think the bank bailout from the beginning, I ran on it in my primary. The, pri the number one issue of my primary was that I stood up even when Republicans were for this bank bailout and said no more. I didn't hear much from the other side really until recently, but I'm glad that they're coming our way and they are beginning to talk about some of the problems. But no, I think TARP was a mistake and most of the people who say it was an asset and that it did very well are all people who didn't predict the housing crisis, didn't predict the boom and bust, didn't know anything about what was coming, and were surprised by this. And they all said, oh, if we hadn't done it, it'd be worse. Well, in some ways, uh, organized bankruptcy for AIG might have been a better way to go. I think AIG would have already begun its recovery had they been allowed to go through bankruptcy. But AIG's bankruptcy, the reason they didn't do it is because it became a pass-through for Goldman Sachs executives. Well, something that's coming, uh, if one of you are elected to the United States Senate uh, representing uh, Kentucky, uh, part of the TARP is uh, the Treasury is still uh, authorized to spend $50 billion in a program which pays uh, services and borrowers uh, to modify mortgages in an effort to uh, keep uh, their home, deserving bar borrowers to keep their home. Uh, should the government be spending tax dollars uh, in an effort to keep borrowers in their homes, Dr. Paul? I think that the TARP funds that are left should go to uh, restore the deficit and to try to pay off debt. I think the TARP funds, the whole entire $800 billion should have never been spent. I think the President Obama's stimulus package, which was nearly a trillion dollars, should have never been spent. And I would vote for any unused funds 
to go back to uh, try to offset the deficit. But on this TARP uh, plan, the $50 billion, won't that create a number of other housing problems uh, across the nation and people who might deserve to be in their homes and just can't make the payments now would be out of their homes? The housing problem was created by bad government policy. It was created by government policy that kept the interest rates at 0% below the market rate, stimulated a bubble that went beyond what would have normally happened and it also was stimulated by the Community Reinvestment Act that said to people, oh, it's a good idea to buy a house without a down payment. Many of these mortgages are so far underwater that you can bail them out for four or five months, but they're not getting any What's better. What's going to happen to those people? Well, nothing good, and it's not, it's not something that makes any of us happy. I mean, it's really a tragedy. But the tragedy really, if you want to think this through, is the bad policy by Barney Frank and others from Jack's party who really got the Community <laughs> Reinvestment Act going, gave Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac more money. In 2003, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac came to the banking committee and said, we, we're a billion dollars short. And the, the conservatives said, well, are you going to make better decisions if we give you a billion dollars more? Now you know what their credit line is. It's unlimited. We've made a grave mistake by giving Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac more money. Uh, Mr. Uh, Conway, what about the $50 billion? Well, I, I, didn't, I don't support the bailouts, but... Um, I, 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 you would I, not support the but, Treasury's uh, authorization? Well I, well, I don't support the bailouts, but uh, let me say this. I don't think it's okay. I don't think it's okay to sit back and say that there are all these people that are going to lose their home. You and know, their homes are going to go yeah, on the market. Yeah, and their homes go on the market. And to do that, I don't think it's okay to sit back and say, oh, that's a tragedy, but we shouldn't try to do anything. What should that's, we do? Well, as Attorney General, I have tried to, to work with other AGs to make certain that, for example, countrywide loans that were uh, sold to people and marketed in the wrong way, uh, that people have some sort of recourse. And a lot of people in Kentucky uh, have had recourse because of the actions we've taken. I've joined with 40-some-odd other uh, attorneys general to make certain that you don't have these auto signatures, you know, uh, going on these, these mortgage foreclosure documents. We need to slow that process down and make certain people aren't being kicked out of their homes uh, too quickly. And we're going to have to look at ways to try to keep people in their homes because, as you know, Bill, in places like Kentucky, you know, people pour everything into their home. But but in the long term, in the long term, we have to get back to sound lending practices. I know when I bought my first home, I sat down with a realtor and with a banker, and they said, okay, you got to you know, put about a quarter down, never buy a home that's, that's more than about three times what you're making in that particular year. And these are sound practices. We got away from that. We got away from that, and we have to get back to it. But the real question to voters is, if there's $200 billion less in TARP, are you going to spend it or not? I'm against spending it. I say put it back in the Treasury. The deficit's the number one problem, and we shouldn't spend it. I'm not sure if I heard what, what his position is on this. We'll talk about the deficit in a minute. Let me uh, move to uh, foreign policy and war. If elected, uh, you're going to have some, some tough decisions to make on, on many different uh, issues, including trade policy, uh, nuclear negotiations with Russia, the Middle East. Uh, give me a couple of thoughts uh, on your foreign policy platform and your experience to deal with these areas. To, to me? Go ahead. Well, first of all, I think that the United States needs to be engaged in the world. Um, I think that the United States uh, needs to be a symbol of goodwill, um, but that we ought to be saying to our partners all across the world, okay, step up and help us bear some of these costs. You know, in the instance of Afghanistan, I actually uh, took on my party in this issue, you know, on this particular issue because I saw the president wanting to surge in Afghanistan, and I didn't hear enough about Pakistan. I didn't hear enough about regional partners. I mean, the best we can hope for in Afghanistan is to leave the nation more stable than we found it and have a country that doesn't bear us ill will and harboring terrorists. And in order to achieve that final political solution, We've got to get regional partners involved. We also have to recognize how big a problem loose nuclear material and, uh, and, and, and nuclear proliferation is. And, and my opponent's on record saying that it wouldn't be a national security threat if Iran acquired a nuclear weapon. It would be. It'd be a threat to the entire Middle Eastern region. It would be a threat to the entire world. And I think we need to stay focused, 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 focused on this issue of nuclear proliferation. Foreign policy platform, uh, Dr. Paul, and this Iranian, uh, Matthew, right. what should be the, uh, the United States' proper response to Iran? Right. I tell people that the most important vote that I would ever take if I'm elected and a vote that I will treat very, very seriously is the vote on whether or not to go to war. I think the vote on declaring war is probably the most important vote that a senator would ever take. I will only vote to go to war as if I were going to war or one of my kids were going to war. I think we go to war in America reluctantly. I think if you talk to our soldiers who have been to war, they'll tell you we should go to war reluctantly, but in defense of our country. I think when 9-11 happened, that it was without question, we cannot let people organize and attack us. And I was in favor of going into Afghanistan. Ten years later, though, I think some questions have to be asked. I asked these questions recently when I saw 100 GIs leaving from Fort Knox. 
to go to Afghanistan, I asked them, do you think we're doing enough? Do you think the Afghans are doing enough to step up and begin to patrol their own streets? And really, the vast majority of these young men and women who are brave, who are doing what we ask of them, said they'd like to see the Afghans step up quicker and what do should more our, for their country. What should our strategy in, in, in Iran be, especially as it mm. relates to uh, their uh, hints about uh, developing nuclear weapons? I think we don't want Iran to have nuclear weapons. We should do everything possible to keep them from having nuclear weapons. One of the things we've tried doing is uh, having sanctions, and I think there hasn't been a great deal of success with that. But I think we should not subsidize companies that do business with Iran. I think that's a mistake. All right, gentlemen, think... our first phone call of the night from Bill Adkins from Grant County. Mr. Adkins, welcome to Kentucky Tonight. Well, thank you. Uh, Mr. Paul, you've taken several positions in this campaign from... Uh... Social Security, you call it the Ponzi scheme, I believe, to the fair tax, a plan that would raise taxes on 90% of Kentuckians to civil rights, where you think it would be up to the lunch counter owner to determine who might be served. Those were stated and explicit positions, but when challenged, you've reversed your position for what appears political expediency. I have a two-part question. Do you have a rough count as to how many times you've excused your reversal by claiming you've been taken out of context? And second, in light of that record of, of indecision, how and why would or should Kentuckians find you credible? I think this wasn't an undecided voter. <laughs> I think I read some of his blog posts before. He's famous. But anyway, what I would say is the reason people in Kentucky will choose me, I think, next Tuesday is because they're tired of the career politicians. They're tired of the politicians who will say or do anything. The things I talk about are actually very mainstream. I talk about a balanced budget amendment. Been campaigning on it for a year and a half. I think both parties are untrustworthy. Republicans and Democrats have done a poor job at controlling spending. I think our problem in Washington is a spending problem, not a revenue problem. I think term limits is a great idea, and I think that's vastly popular with independents and Democrats. We think people go and stay too long. I think they should read the bills. I mean, for goodness sake, should I not read the bills before they vote on them? So I think over, uh, next Tuesday, the, the public will decide who's had consistent positions and who hasn't had consistent positions. Do you want positions. to comment or clarify any of the questions that he had about the Civil Rights Act? Uh, about they all, some they've of the... all been mischaracterized, many of them by my opponent. Many of them have been shot down. The Civil Rights Act uh, discussion was shot down by MSNBC, and he was found to be not telling the truth on that as well. So, uh, you know, it's sort of hard to argue against a straw man argument that they develop that aren't my positions. Mr. Conway, you want to comment on that? Uh, uh, I, uh, yeah, I'm flabbergasted. I, I watched on MSNBC uh, 20 of the most painful and embarrassing moments I've ever seen on national cable TV as my opponent questioned fundamental provisions of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. His words were, had he been in, um, had he been in the Senate, then he would have been seeking to modify the lunch counter provision. Um, yeah, we all know what the lunch counter provision is, um, and, and that's on the record. And I don't think he can run from that. He's running from his own words. And I think seniors have an important choice to make next Tuesday uh, between someone like me who is going to stand up for them, stand up for Social Security. My opponent's called it a Ponzi scheme. He's for a $2,000 Medicare deductible. He's come out in favor of a 23% national sales tax. In the world in which I live, the Kentucky seniors I see, they're on fixed income. They're getting about $1,100 a month in Social Security. Maybe they have a pension. They can't afford a 23% national sales tax. They can't afford a $2,000 uh, Medicare deductible. The students in Kentucky who can't afford college, they can't afford doing away with the Federal Department of Education because they need their Pell Grants and they need their Stafford loans. The veterans, the veterans need the Americans with Disabilities Act. I campaigned last week with Max Cleland who left three limbs on the battlefield in Vietnam, Bill. And he came here because he was concerned about preserving veteran, veterans' benefits in light of what my opponent had said, and because he was concerned about the Americans with Disabilities Act. It protects us all. Dr. Paul, let me give you a chance to respond to all of those. Uh, do you think that Social Security is a Ponzi scheme? <laughs> The 20 most painful minutes on MSNBC were Chris Matthews and Jack when Jack decided he wanted to attack my religion. So I think okay. we have a little uh, bit of a disagreement uh, okay. there. And boy, was that a squirm uh, fest. Uh, is Social uh, Security a Ponzi scheme? What Social Security is, is it is having difficulty funding itself. It's funded by current people paying taxes. So in 1937, when Social Security started, there were 42 workers and one retiree. 
ran surpluses for many decades. We get to the 1970s and 80s, and it was seven workers to one retiree still running surpluses. But guess what? The career politicians were squandering this. They were putting the general fund and they were spending it. Right now, we're down to less than three workers for one retiree. We're headed towards, in the next decade, having one worker for one retiree. What does all this mean? It means the baby boomers are retiring. We have to figure out how to pay for it. Re right now, this year, Social Security is paying out more than it brings in. And so there is a problem with funding it. And I'm willing to step up and say, let's have an adult discussion in our country right. about how we fix these programs. And if my producer will remind me, I want to return to a discussion about Social Security, Medicare, mm -hmm. and uh, how we reduce the deficit. But let sure. me just give you a chance to, to, to clarify some of the comments that Mr. Adkins and Mr. Conway made about the 1964 Civil Rights Act. I, I, is there, do you deny that you said that, and uh, is there any clarification um, that you would like to